show you everything you need to know about Chromebooks and Chrome OS in this Chromebook tutorial. So be sure to watch this video all the way to the end so you don't miss any tips and tricks for your Chromebook. Let's start right away with the most important steps that will help you set up your Chromebook to best suit your purposes. On the bottom side you find the tray. You can also right click on the desktop to automatically hide the tray while another window is open. Or you can change the position of the tray. If the tray is hidden you just have to move your cursor to the edge of the tray to make it reappear. In the center of the tray you have the option to pin your most important apps for quick access. To pin apps in the tray we open the so-called launcher by clicking on the circle at the bottom left of the screen. The launcher contains all the apps you have installed on your Chromebook. Both the apps and all settings sync on every Chromebook you log into with your Google account so every Chromebook becomes your Chromebook after you log in. So you can go from a large and stationary 17 inch Chromebook like the Acer Chromebook 317 to a small and mobile Chromebook like the 11.6 inch Lenovo IdeaPad Flex 3 in seconds. You're no longer locked into one device but you can switch from one Chromebook to the other in seconds for maximum flexibility. Note however that not all apps will work on every Chromebook. For example Steam only works on powerful Chromebooks. Other apps like Call of Duty Mobile will only work on Chromebooks with ARM CPUs. If you want to install certain apps or games on the Chromebook besides the standard Google tools, you can go to the Google Play Store and choose from a variety of apps and use them on your Chromebook. Conveniently, if you've already purchased an app from your Android smartphone with your Google account, you can now use it with your Chromebook as well. For example, if you want to play a board game like Terraforming Mars on your Chromebook, you can easily purchase it from the Google Play Store, install it on your Chromebook and play. While many apps run great on a Chromebook, there are unfortunately a large number of apps that are not yet optimized for use with Chromebooks. And some apps don't work at all in Chrome OS yet. To open installed apps, you can simply left click or tap them on the touchpad. To pin an app or Steam game from the launcher, you need to right click to open the context menu and select pin to tray. By the way, you can also right click on the Chromebook by tapping the touchpad with two fingers at the same time. This way you can theoretically also uninstall the app or open the app info where you can also deactivate the notifications of an app for example. If you click on the free space in the launcher you can automatically sort the apps by name or color. Of course you can also sort the apps manually by left clicking and holding them and dragging them to the desired position. You can also group apps by dragging them on top of each other and then naming these groups individually to gain more clarity in your app launcher. You can scroll up and down as usual with the mouse wheel. If you only use the touchpad, you can swipe up and down with two fingers at the same time to navigate through all menus. At the very top of the launcher, you also have a very useful and comprehensive search, which you can use to find open browser tabs for example, as well as files, apps or even settings. You want to add your printer for example, then you don't have to click through complicated menus, but simply search for printer and have several choices here directly to which setting you would like to jump to. If you want to add the printer that's easy too. If you have a Wi-Fi enabled printer and that it's connected to the same Wi-Fi as your Chromebook, the printer will automatically appear in the list of printers to add and can be set up with a click on save. With my Epson printer, which is now 10 years old, this works without any problems. The important thing is that the printer is connected to the Wi-Fi and can also receive print jobs via Wi-Fi. Alternatively, printers can also be connected to the Chromebook via USB and thus print jobs can be created. Printing via Bluetooth, on the other hand, is currently not supported by Chromebooks. Now that we've looked at the tray and the launcher, you might be wondering how you can drag Chromebook apps to the desktop. This is not possible on Chrome OS, unlike Windows or Mac OS as usual. However, you do have the option to pin files or folders in the desktop access. To do this, we first open the Files app, which is comparable to Windows Explorer. Here we can see the most recently opened files. On the left, the locally stored files are under My Files. And under Google Drive, you have direct access to the files in the cloud storage of your Google account. Google Drive is a cloud storage service from Google that lets you store files online and access them from any device. You can also use Google Drive to store and share documents, pictures, videos and other files. Every Google account comes with 15 GB of free cloud storage, which you can use for free. With Google One you also have the option of significantly increasing your storage space in the Google Cloud and unlocking additional benefits. Personally I use the basic version with 100 GB of cloud storage and get along well with it. In addition to the cloud storage, Google Drive also includes free office tools such as Google Docs, Google Spreadsheets and Google Presentations. 
annotations, but more on that later. If you want to access important or frequently used locally stored files on your desktop app, you can either click individual files with two fingers at the same time and select pin to tray. To the left of the current date is a small icon for access to your pin files. To keep a good overview, you can, for example, create a folder with your most frequently used files, pin it to the quick clipboard, and thus you have a tidy desktop and still have the most important files quickly available. Speaking of quick, when you open an audio file, for example, a media control appears between the access and the current date, allowing you to pause and restart the music quickly and easily in between. Since Chromebooks have a very strong plug and play, you can easily plug in USB sticks, external hard drives or micro SD cards and save the files on them right away without any issues. Note however that you can't run or install Windows or Mac programs on your Chromebook. Media files like PDF documents, images, audio or videos are of course no problem at all. The local Chromebook storage is located in My Files, the cloud storage from Google Drive is located directly below and is automatically synchronized. You can compress Press both locally stored files and files in the cloud into a zip file by selecting them, right clicking to open the context menu and compress them. If you no longer need the files, you can put it in the recycle bin. From there, the files can be restored for 30 days until they are deleted permanently. At the top right of the Files app, you can search for files and folders, change the display and sorting or make other things. Here you can also see how much local storage you still have available on your Chromebook. On the top left you can see the most recently opened files. Here you also have the option to filter by audio files, documents, images and videos if you're looking for something specific in a hurry. Right click on the desktop to select set background and style and change your Chromebooks wallpaper or activate a screensaver. You can also choose whether the system should have a light or a dark design. If you select auto, the design of your Chromebook will change to the light mode at sunrise and dark mode at sunset. If you have an image file in your files, you can alternatively just right click on it and immediately set as background. In the lower right corner of the tray, you can see the current date, the current time, the keyboard layout, the signal strength of the Wi-Fi and the battery level. If we left click on the current date, a simplified representation of your Google Calendar is shown. The dots indicate that there are calendar entries on the respective days. Clicking on these entries opens the Google Calendar app on your Chromebook, including detailed settings options. If you have a Chromebook that is compatible with an use iPen, then the pen icon will appear to the left on the current date. These are the stylus tools that allow you to instantly take a screenshot, create notes and use a laser pointer or magnifying glass. You can also connect your Chromebook to your Android smartphone in just a few steps. Once connected, you can use the phone hub on your Chromebook to connect your smartphone's hotspot, mute your smartphone, search for it using a loud sound or open Chrome tabs recently opened on your smartphone in just a few clicks. You can also use Nearby Share, similar to Apple AirDrop, to send files directly and wirelessly back and forth between a Chromebook and an Android smartphone. If you want to learn more about interaction between Android smartphone and your Chromebook, check out my videos below. Click on the time in the lower right corner of the tray to open the quick settings. Here you can for example connect to the Wi-Fi or Bluetooth devices or turn notifications on and off for individual apps, all apps or just the app notification icon. You can also take a screenshot of the screen in the screenshot section, surprise surprise, or create a screen video. You can activate a blue light filter via the night light feature and if you're using a Chromecast, you can quickly and easily stream your Chromebook screen directly to your living room. TV for example. You can also change the keyboard layout here, you can directly access the design settings of your Chromebook and you can also change the volume and brightness in addition to the corresponding buttons on your keyboard in the quick settings. If you click on the arrow to the right of the volume, you also have advanced audio settings and can select the input and output device of your Chromebook. At the very top you can log out of your Google account and then log in with another account or as a guest. 
You can shut down the Chromebook, lock it or open the settings menu. If we open the settings, you will see different toppings on the left side. But you can also scroll down the settings window and have all these topic panels in view. You can also use the very practical and intuitive search function in the settings. In the account section, you can use Sync and Google services to specify which data should be synchronized on your Chrome OS device, for example, if you do not want to synchronize app settings, Wi-Fi access or wallpapers. With Family Link, you also have very good and simple options on Chrome OS to control your child's usage, such as screen time. To do this, you first need to add another person on your Chromebook and select that they are a child. Then you can create a Google account for your child or sign in with your child's existing Google account. Under Device, you can customize your touchpad and keyboard, for example. In the Display section, you can change the display size and orientation of your internal display. If you connect an external mirror, you can also set the position of the monitor to match the Chromebook, set the resolution and refresh rate, as well as overscan and adjust the edges of the desktop to match the screen. You can also easily mirror the Chromebook screen to the external monitor by checking the mirror internal display box. I would like to recommend the security and privacy section and the lock screen and lock in settings. Here you first have to confirm your password and then you can activate the setting lock in sleep mode or when closing. Combine this with a switch to sleep mode when closing setting and your Chromebook will be protected from unauthorized access after you close it, since the password has to be entered. If you want your Chromebook to be well protected but don't always want to enter the password of your Google account, you can assign a six digit PIN by selecting PIN or password, which can speed up the login significantly. However, make sure that your PIN cannot easily be guessed. You can also display some valuable setting options directly in the quick settings in the Operation 8 section, but you can also activate and manage them here. If we take a look at the Operation 8s in the quick settings, you can, for example, activate a read aloud function or a dock magnifier. The option to use a large cursor or to highlight the cursor is also exciting. Definitely take a look at the accessibility features and see what is useful and sensible for you. At the very bottom you will also find advanced settings which also reveal some important functions. Besides settings for date and time or languages, you can also unlink your Google Drive account under files if you don't want it linked to your Chromebook. You can also share files on the network. Under print and scan for example, you can digitize documents and images using a connected scanner, in my case my apps work for multifunction device. A very important feature for those who want to use Linux on the Chromebook is hidden in the developer section. Here you can install a full Linux Debian operating system on your Chromebook and thus run many other programs like LibreOffice and games on the Chromebook. If you want to reset your Chromebook to factory defaults, you can do this very easily and uncomplicated with the help of PowerWash. But be careful, this will delete all local data, so always make sure that you have backed up all files beforehand. In the About Chrome OS section, you can see which Chrome OS version you currently have in your Chromebook, and you can also actively check if there's already a newer Chrome OS version for your Chromebook. Under additional information, you can also change the channel your Chromebook is on. By default, you'll be in the stable channel and I recommend staying in this one, as it is, as the name suggests, the most stable and well-tested version of Chrome OS. If you switch to the beta or even the developer channel, you will get a newer version of Chrome OS with newly developed features available, but this Chrome OS version can still be very buggy. If you also switch from beta or developer channel back to the stable channel, a power wash is performed and all local data is deleted. So think carefully if you really want to switch to the beta or developer channel. Also in the additional information section, you can also see how long your Chromebook will continue to get updates. In my case, the Chromebook will continue to get new software and security updates until June 2029. Now let's get to the biggest differences of a Chromebook compared to a traditional Windows laptop, namely the apps and programs. As mentioned earlier, it is not possible to install Windows programs on a Chromebook. On the one hand, this is one of the main reasons why Chromebooks are extremely secure. On the other hand, if you're a Chromebook newbie coming from the Windows world, you'll have to get used to it. True, Microsoft Office, for example Excel, Word and PowerPoint cannot be installed on Chromebooks the way you're used to on a Windows laptop. However, you can use Microsoft 365 with the familiar Office tools completely free of charge in the browser and access it from anywhere without installation. If you own a Chromebook, however, you should definitely take a look at Google's free Office tools, that is Google Docs, Google Spreadsheets and Google Presentations in particular. These Office tools 
modules are tightly integrated with your Chromebook and can be used both online and offline. There are also various other tools like the email program Gmail or Google Notes. If you have a Chromebook and a Google account, you won't have to spend any more money on additional Office software since the most important programs are available directly with your Google account. The convenient thing is that you can instantly access your data from any Chromebook or with any browser and it is protected from data loss in the Google Cloud. If these tools aren't enough for you, there are many more Office apps to choose from via the Google Play Store that you can use with your Chromebook. The Chrome Web Store also has many exciting plugins and apps that you can install on your Chromebook. For example, I took my first screen captures for How to Chromebook using the Chrome Web App from Screencastify. You can also customize the design of your Chrome browser by choosing from a wide variety of themes in the Chrome Web Store. But that's not all. There are also extensions in the Chrome Web Store that you can use, for example, to customize your mouse cursors in the Chrome browser. You can even install games like the first-person classic Quake or the multiplayer game Treasure Arena via the Chrome Web Store. If you install these games, they appear normally in the launcher, can be pinned to the tray if necessary, and are also launched via it. Even though not all apps from the Chrome Web Store work so smoothly, you should definitely take a look at the Chrome Web Store as a Chromebook user. <laughs> Contrary to many preconceptions, you can of course use your Chromebook offline. For example, you can open a Google Docs document, click File and make it available offline with one click. To show how you can use your Chromebook offline, I'm going now to turn off my Wi-Fi so I no longer have an internet connection. As you can see above, I can now continue working on the Google Docs document offline and it will sync with Google Drive once I'm back online. If I close the document, I can click on the Google Docs app and see the Docs document made available offline. Here. If I click on it, the Google Docs document opens and I can continue editing it even though I still don't have internet. This works not only with Google Docs, but of course also with Google Spreadsheets or Google Presentations. In addition to Google tools, there are also offline apps like the Calculator or a Simple Text Editor, which are specialized for local use. Basically, you can use your Chromebook offline, but if you use Android apps, there are apps that require an online connection and apps that you can use offline. If you have Steam installed in your Chromebook, you can also play games like Age of Empires 2 offline. If you are permanently online anyway and like to play games, you should definitely take a look at cloud gaming. There are two excellent options for playing the most modern games even on a very inexpensive and simply equipped Chromebook. Since the computing power takes place in the cloud, a very good internet connection is sufficient to start gaming without installation and in just a few steps. While you can link Boosteroid to your existing game libraries on Steam or Epic Games and play GTA 5 or Diablo 4 for example, you can access and play a wide range of games directly with Game Pass in Xbox Cloud Gaming. You can find a link to Boosteroid in the video description below. Especially as a Chromebook newbie, I also recommend the Discover app in the launcher. Here you can find a lot of tips and tricks for your Chromebook. Google also shows here again and again selected new features for your Chromebook. And in the perks section, there are always some useful goodies, like in this case Minecraft completely for free. Check it out and maybe there's also something useful for you. Now it's your turn. I put so many hours in this video to give you a great overview about Chromebooks and Chrome OS. If you subscribe now and I reach 1000 subscribers, I will re-upload this video with English screen footage. So please support me if you watch this video all the way to the end and comment with hashtag Chromebook if you like this video. If you want to see 10 tips and tricks every Chromebook user should know, click on the left video. If you want to see how you can play GTA 5 on any Chromebook, click on the right video and I say thanks for watching and see you in the next video.